In today's episode of Locked On Pistons Podcast, we are going to be handing out the season awards for the Detroit Pistons now that the season is over. MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Most Improved Rookie of the Year, and then also we'll have some other fun ones as well. Stay tuned for all that in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons Podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free to available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons, hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Now, I know I told you guys in the intro that we were going to be handing out awards, and we absolutely are, 100% are, but I had to make it audible because right before I started recording the podcast, really, right before we clicked, uh, as the intro was going, if you want me to be honest, um, I saw an article that was just dropped, and apparently Stan Van Gundy, former Pistons head coach, former Piston bre- president of basketball operations, was interviewed uh, by 97-1. Uh, Restore the Floor podcast, and he talked about his time with Detroit, and he also talked about what the Pistons need to do moving forward. So I think that is something I'd rather talk about to start out the gate, and then we'll get into handing out some season awards uh, for the Detroit Pistons. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into this. So Stan Van Gundy, like I said, it says he was on the Run the Floor podcast. I've, I haven't uh, – or Restore the Floor podcast. I have never – I haven't heard of it. I haven't listened to it. I, I'm assuming it's with 97 won the ticket. Um and the title of the article I read, it's Sam Van Gundy on, on regrets in Detroit, path forward for the Pistons. Um, not going to spend too much time talking about his regrets with the Pistons. I do want to say, though, for all you guys out there, I did really want to get Stan Van Gundy on the podcast last offseason. It was something that I pushed for and, you know, almost happened. Uh, it would have been a cool episode. But um, nonetheless, uh, very good guy, very cool guy. I, I know people don't like – there's a lot of criticism for how he did with his, you know, job-wise with the Pistons, but a very good guy. Um, so, uh, anyways, not going to spend too much time on what he said about his time with the Pistons. I want to focus on what he said about the current Detroit Pistons. Um, so he was asked about their young core and he said, quote, it's clear. It's not the best young core in the league or even one or even one of the top two or three. He goes on to say, so you're going to have to supplement it as you go along. I think they've got some good pieces. Duran's a very good rebounder. Thompson can defend. I really, I personally really like Marcus Sasser, Jane Ivy. I like, but those guys are all either low level starters, fourth or fifth starters, or rotation pieces. They need two other guys at least to put with Kay Cunningham to have a chance to get better. So we'll stop it right there. He goes on, but we're we're gonna stop it right there. I think that right there, that sentiment, it, it puts into perspective for Pistons fans that read that how I think people outside Detroit are looking at the Pistons young core multiple times in the podcast. I come on here. I say that Pistons fans are not going to be happy when they find out what the value for player X is or player player Y is Uh, Jane Ivy, Marcus Sasser or Jalen Duran. I think Asar Thompson is extremely valued from what I understand. Um, But outside of him and Cade and Stu to a certain extent, the other guys are not nearly as valued as much in the rest of the league. I don't, it's not that they think badly of them. I don't want to, you know, try to paint that narrative. It's not that they think they're like terrible and you like you have to, they can't get anything. But how Pistons fans, how I've seen the Pistons community try to value them is not how outside Detroit values them. And if they do trade them, I'd be shocked if they get close to what Pistons fans think they're, some Pistons fans, not all Pistons fans, but some Pistons fans believe, which is, you know, an insane return, basically. Um, so I think the fact that Stan is pointing out that he believes that there are low-level starters, fourth or fifth options, or rotation pieces, I think you can look at that in two different ways. Is that long-term? Potentially. Is that is that what they are long-term? I mean, potentially. That's very likely, you know, how, you know, a lot of young players turn out. Not all of them turn into stars. But I think more so. I, 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 I think that he's mostly – I don't think he's trying to put a cap on all this. And maybe he is. Maybe he is. I don't know. But I more so, when I looked at this and I read this, I thought he was more so speaking to what they are right now for this team and that they need at least two, at least two guys to put next to Cade, next to Cade to get better this year. 
have a chance to get better this year. Because relying on those guys, you're not going to get better. And I completely agree with that. It's not going to happen. You have to get better this season. They're going to make a lot of moves, and it's for that reason right there. Sasser, Jay and Ivy, Jalen Duran, heck, even Asar Thompson. Even though I don't think they're going to move Asar Thompson, expecting Asar Thompson to be highly impactful as an NBA player in his second year. I mean, maybe it does happen. I He was a highly impactful defender his rookie year, so maybe it happens again. Maybe he, he proves everyone wrong two years in a row. But those guys, maybe four or five years down the line, can be incredibly impactful. But I can't see, based off this last season, how, like, like Stan's saying, them being starting-level players that help this team get a lot better, which is why the Pistons are going to have to make moves, which I, I agree with this statement from him. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, that's an easy thing from the outside for any of us doing comment commentary to sit back and say. The hard part is figuring out how to get that done and add two really good pieces around Cade. But I think they're making a mistake if they think any of those other guys are good enough to be second or third players on a contending type team. No doubt. Like I, I, that's, I think that's obvious. Um, and I think he's really specifying, specifying, my goodness, on Cade. You need to build around Cade. Everyone outside Detroit sees this. Like, seriously, talk to... I, I, I've heard from people. I've talked with some people. Everyone outside Detroit, it, it's just so clear to them. Just build around Cade. Whatever's best around Cade, why are you not just building around him? Whatever helps him reach his best self, build around him. And Stan's voicing that here. I completely agree with him here as well. Um, he mentioned how some people, and I don't think some people are even saying, I think this is just a 97 to 1 ticket pipe narrative. I haven't seen any Pistons fans say that, but this sounds like the type of thing 97 1 would push which is trading Cade to get more assets and start completely over. Stan correctly, by the way, points out, I think that's absurd. I think Cade Cunningham is a really good player. Now, is he a superstar? I don't know yet. The thing that people want to discount all the time in sports is the role of luck. He goes on to talk about how uh, the number one pick in Cade's draft is obviously Cade, but if you just happen to get lucky, get the number one pick in Wemby's draft, now all of a sudden you jump start. Now you're one of the best young teams in the league. It's just a random, you know, you can't choose what pick you get the, or what year you get the number one pick. It just, you know, it is what it is. Um, so he talked about how that impacts San Antonio differently than Detroit, whereas San Antonio has Wemby, who's like the greatest prospect of all time in their number one class, and the Pistons have Cade, who are, he goes on to say, is a really, really good prospect. But obviously, I think everyone would agree, even Cade's diehard fans would agree that he is not Victor Wembanyama. We've never seen a Victor Wembanyama. So obviously, um, I think he goes on to say, the problem I would think from Detroit's standpoint is, what are you going to do with that cap space now? When are you going to try to win? My guess is Tom Gores wants to get this thing going quickly. Before I keep going, I think Stan's someone who would know a thing or two about Tom Gores and what he's thinking and how he feels about this kind of stuff. Take that for what you will. Um, They're not going to sit around and wait on a young core. I think that's the right approach because Orlando is as young. I think this is a great point he makes right here. Because Orlando is as young or younger than they are, and they're much better than Detroit. San Antonio has a brighter future. Oklahoma City is the youngest team in the league by minutes played, and they're the number one seed in the West. So this, again, this points to the fact that the Pistons don't have the young excuses. Like, there's other teams that are young with good players as well, way better than the Pistons. So now the Pistons are in a position where their young guys are just aren't as good as the other young guys. So now they need to, like Stan goes on to point out, and he's pointed out multiple times here, and something I've pointed out, beat, I think some beat writers have pointed out, I think some Pistons fans have even been pointing out, it's time to mortgage some of that stuff to get an actual good team around Cade and build for the future. Get to that next step. You have to get to that next step because these other teams with their young core, with their young guys, have, have flown by you. They're, like you're not even in their class no more. They're, they're, they're waiting on your young guys, where are you going to get you? You're not going to get better than Orlando, Oklahoma City, San Antonio now. Now you need to go out and make moves. Um, so he goes on. He, he finishes off saying, uh, quote, look, I'm a big fan of Tom. I know the criticism. He's got it in Detroit, but I think he really wants to win. I certainly think you've gotten plenty of proof of him not being afraid to spend money, which is true. Um, that's not an issue. Even before me, if you go back to some of the moves in the years before I got there, there's just been some bad personnel moves made. I don't think that's on Tom. I don't really see a big problem with where he lives either. I never did. If they were winning, it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, he talks about how, you know, uh, He's shown his commitment. He's opened up his pocketbook anytime he's been asked to. And that's something I, and we'll wrap it up here with, they're going to be aggressive, I believe. I think everything Stan said in this article, whether you love or hate him, is absolutely on the money. It, it's in, from most people I've talked to outside Detroit throughout the season, it's more so where everyone else lands on this situation as well. Maybe minor tweaks, but they all arrive at the same standpoint. I think that that's where the Pistons are going to end up going. Their president of basketball operations that they hire is going to share this same sentiment because, like Stan points out, 
And I think like most Pistons fans who have followed the team during Tom Gore's ownership, he wants to win now. He's not going to allow this to happen again. Like he's, they're going to make moves. Whether it works out or not is a different story, but they're going to try to make moves to win. I, I completely agree with that. The last thing I want to end off with is what Stan said about Tom Gores, which is why I've come on this podcast and I've said why it's so hard for me to talk about Tom Gores because he deserves criticism 100% for how this team has went. But the main thing you want of your owner is there's two things you want of your owner. One, to open up the pocketbook, like Stan says, and be willing to spend money. And if there's one thing that Tom has proven over and over again is that he is willing to spend money to make this team good. Like, it hasn't worked. It, they haven't been good. They've had a few years, Blake's year, six, 2016. They've had those years. But it, he spent money whenever it's been asked that, hey, this will make us a good team. He puts his money where his mouth is, which is what you want from your owner. That's one. And two, I know this for a fact. He, he wants to win. Tom wants to win. That is, he's not one of the owners that just it doesn't care about the team losing. He cares about the fact that the team is losing. Now, you can critique how he's went about it, and that's that's what's up for crit- criticism, 100%. But I think, I, I think if they just get on the same page, if they can just get one line of thinking, one clear vision, just one clear direction, get a guy in here that you trust without the outside, without having 25 people in the front office trying to talk, without having input from this person, that person, this person, and people going at each other, having a mini civil war between the front office and the head coaching staff. Like, let's not have that again in a, in a season. Just get one clear line. Get a president of basketball operations, trust him, let him get his guys, and support him with your pocketbook, which is what Tom has done. He needs to do the other part. But the, the main two parts he's done, which is why it's hard for me to – it's, which is why it's hard for me to talk about Tom because, again, he deserves criticism for how this stuff has went for the people he has trusted. But the, the main two things that people always bring up about owners is spend money and, and care about winning. And he, he both those he does. So I, I'm just hoping this offseason they can get on one page, one line of thinking, and they don't have 25 people in the kitchen and there's not civil wars going on within the organization. Like, I hope that's not the case no more. Clear a house. That's why you just just clear everything and get one guy in, trust him, and support him with your pockets like that. There you go. And I think I, I think that's what's going to happen this offseason. I think Pistons fans will be happy with that. So um, let me know what you guys think about what Stan said. Do you guys agree, disagree? Um, in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Cuckoo Hill. When we come back, now we'll start to hand out Pistons season awards. Sorry, but I, I thought this was a bigger deal to be talked about. But we'll hand out some awards for the Detroit Pistons uh, when we come back. I've been told I'm a competitive person. I've been told this by my wife. I've been told this by my friends. Um, and you know what? I think you guys probably think that's true as well. And you know what? It's 100% right. I have a competitive side. I've been a competitive person my entire life. I think all of us have a competitive side to us. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also heist their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So go in the game and join your friends today. Download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store and Google Play. Again, download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store and Google Play today. So I want to thank you guys again for being locked on Pistons, your first listen of every single day. We're free to be on your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Um, if you guys are watching on YouTube, you guys keep seeing me look to my left. I believe it's your guys' right when you're watching. I got two monitors set up now. I've always had two monitors, but I, my brother had just revealed to me that, hey, cool, you can have your PC on two different monitors, and it's really easy to do. And so I've been looking, this is where I'm looking for all the information now. Instead of looking down over here, I'm looking over here. So if you guys are wondering why I'm looking over here, that's why. Um, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and hand out some Piston Season Awards. So obviously, we'll go through like the obvious ones of like MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, Most Improved Six Man, like all that stuff. 
just like the NBA does. But I tweeted out and asked all you guys to, hey, what are some fun ones? What are some fun create creative ones? Um, made up awards that you want to see me hand out. So in the final segment, we'll go over some of those. Um which I, I, you guys sent a few fun ones too. So we'll go over those, but we'll start off with the, with the real life one. So MVP, I don't think that's, you know, even up for discussion. It's obviously Cade. We're not going to spend too much time talking about why I, I think it's self-explanatory. Cade was the MVP um, of the Detroit Pistons season. Um, let's move on to, I think this is actually the best, the most, uh, the hardest one. Sixth man of the year. So I'm going to hand this because you have a few guys like Jane Ivy came up the bench for a portion of the season. I saw Thompson came off the bench um, for a portion of the season. Simone Fontecchio came off the bench for a portion of the season. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hand the six man of the year award to Simone Fontecchio. I think just because a star started for a decent chunk of the year. Um, so did Jane Ivy and Simone. He also started for a little bit of his time with Detroit, but, I thought he was just as effective off of off the bench for the Pistons as he was starting, and his contributions were immediately felt and did a world of difference for the Detroit Pistons. Having him in that lineup with Cade, Ivy, Asar, Duran just did wonders. Take Asar out and put Stu, it did wonders. That lineup actually was able to sustain. They were able to be competitive with that five-man lineup. Now, when they went past that, it was over with. But a large main, like obviously Cade, but a main part of that lamp, why it was able to happen is because of how Simone Fontecchio was able to shoot the ball and not be a complete slouch defensively. He has some size. He has some, some athleticism. He gives effort defensively. He's active. All of that, along with him being a movement three-point shooter and being a little bit more, um, having more to, a little bit more to his offensive game than just catching, shooting threes and movement threes. Uh, he attacked the rim quite a bit. Um yeah, I, I think Simone Fontecchio is the sixth man of the year. I, I thought he was fantastic. It was one, I think it might be Troy Weaver's best trade he made. Um, it was it it was a great trade, and I think Simone Fontecchio can you know I feel comfortable giving him sixth man of the year, even though he only came off the bench seven games. He played in sixteen. Um, it is what it is. I, the Pistons didn't really have anyone else come off the bench for a long portion of the time. You feel me? So I'm gonna give it to Simone Fontecchio. Um, the next award is going to be Rookie of the Year. Uh, obviously, I think this goes to Asar Thompson. Uh, Marcus Sasser didn't play nearly as much as Asar Thompson. I thought Asar Thompson, right out the gate, proved that he is one of the better defenders in the entire NBA. And I think if the Pistons would have just kept him in the starting lamp all year instead of benching him around, like, game 12, the first 11 games, he was doing the same stuff that his brother was doing. I'm in. Over in Houston. Damn near double-double with rebounds. Damn near four stocks. Like... He was offensively, he was figuring stuff out. And I think both him and his brother would figure things out offensively as the season got on. But if he would have just been continued to be like a priority, I feel like he kind of faded to the background for Monty for whatever reason. It's something we complain about all year. But he kind of faded to the background in the first 12 games. They they went full on offense and he was put to the bench and wasn't playing as much and was put in the corner. So um, but even despite that, I, I think you saw how impactful he is defensively. And there is no other rookie that even comes close to you know taking that from him. So I'm going to give it to Asar Thompson, rookie of the year. Um, now let's move on to most improved player of the year. I think this also goes to Cade Cunningham. I don't think any other player got better this year besides Cade and Isaiah Stewart. We'll give it we'll, – we'll, Isaiah Stewart got better for sure, 100%. But outside of that, I, I don't think any other player got better. Duran, maybe you could argue. I don't think Ivy got better. I, I think Ivy took a big step backwards. I, if anything, I honestly would feel comfortable saying Duran stayed the same. I don't think he got much better um, overall. Now, like, did he add some things to his game? Yeah, he got better footwork. But as far as impact, overall impact, no, I don't think he got m- much better or worse. I think he stayed around the same he was. Um, so a most improved player, I think, goes between Isaiah Stewart and Cade. I'm going to give it to Cade. Um, I-, I thought Cade had an excellent season for individually. Obviously, team success was, you know, is what it is. But K through his first two years struggled with efficiency. He was below 52 shooting percentage. He hadn't gotten to 32% from beyond the arc. Um, he hadn't gotten above 20 points a game. Obviously, he missed most of his second year. So this is really a second year. Um, he went from averaging uh, what it was. He was av- he had a 50.4 true shooting percentage his rookie year. Now he's at 55 true shooting percentage. He shot 31% from deep his rookie year. Now he's shooting thir- nearly 36% from deep. Um, 
He's much more efficient shooting 45% from the floor compared to 41% from the floor. So he got better all across the board. Uh, I think Cade also wins most improved player of the year. Um, now let's go uh, defense. Did we, did we do defensive player of the year already? Well, I think we did, right? Defensive player of the year went to Asar. Rookie of the year went to Asar. We did six man of the year. We did MVP. We did most improved. There's one I'm missing. Which one? I should have, I should have brought up the NBA awards in front of me. I thought I could remember the NBA awards. I've been watching the NBA my entire life, but I guess I'm I'm not capable of remembering their awards. I think that's all of them, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's all of them. Um, I guess we could do. I'm not going to do Clutch Player of the Year because the Pistons obviously, um, <laughs> no, like no one was clutch enough for this team. Um. And this team sucked. So, like, no. <laughs> like, no. So, fair enough. Um, if we didn't do defensive player of the year, I think we did. But if we if we didn't, I, I'm pretty sure I went over it. But Asar Thompson. I'm giving it to Asar. I think he was their best defender this year by far. I don't think anyone else really came close to impacting it how he did on the defensive end. So, I think he easily is defensive player of the year for the Detroit Pistons. Um, so, there you go. There's my season awards for the Detroit Pistons in a – in a season that was very, very poor, um, and in a season where no one really deserves any awards, we handed them out anyways, and that's my award. So do you guys agree, disagree? Who would you give uh, MVP to, Defensive Player, Rookie of the Year? Um, let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter, at Kook Hill. When we come back, we'll talk about um, some of the made-up awards that you guys tweeted me that I thought were fun, and we'll hand them out. Um, at the end of the podcast. So stay tuned for that um, coming up. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. All on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. Again, I've told you guys this many, many times years ago when betting became legal in Michigan. I didn't know anything I was doing. I didn't, wasn't familiar with the scene at all. I went to FanDuel, and I have not turned back since. I maybe should. I, you know, I've been on there a little bit too long, too much. You know, my I feel like some of my friends would tell me I'm I'm maybe addicted a little bit to to the FanDuel. But that's how great it is. FanDuel is amazing. It's self-explanatory. It's super fun. A lot of stuff to do on there. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com. Slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. That's what FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. Free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons, hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. So now this is just going to be a fun segment. Uh, nothing serious at all here. Um, I asked you guys right before I record, I was like, what are some rewards I should hand out? Some made-up ones, not like the real-life one. What are some made-up ones you guys want me to hand out? Um, and you guys gave me a, quite a few answers. So I thought this would be fun. Um, so let's go into it. So this one is from Heyo on Twitter. It says, we need the most likely to die for a loose ball. We need to find out which players, which six players go for that loose ball during that practice. If you remember, he's refer- referring to when Monty Williams talked about how, you know, during a losing streak, and they asked him, what makes you think that things are going to turn around? He was like, we had six guys diving on a loose ball in practice, man. I think this thing, you know, we're really into it. Um, I think most likely to die for a loose ball in the Pistons is Asar Thompson, probably. Um, I think that's pretty safe to say. I say Asar. Um, at least that's who I'd pick. Um, next one is best quotes. By far, 100%. It's not even close. Monty Williams. When I tell you Monty Williams was a historic quote this year, like by any sport, man, like forget, forget sports. We got to go beyond sports. Presidents, prime ministers, any, like anything. We're going beyond sports. Historically great quote. And you may be asking me, Koo, why is that? Because this dude would come out. And not only did we get, first of all, quotes about marrying his daughter, uh, we got some of that. Oh, we also got some quotes, you know, about the diving on the loose balls in the middle of a losing streak, why that's going to turn things around. What makes his quotes so historic this year is that each, I, I swear to God, probably 90% of his quotes, 
he was saying one thing and then do something completely different and then would come back the next day and act like he didn't just do the opposite of what he said before and then would say the same thing again. Like it was like I not even close. No one compares. I don't I think Monty Williams might be forget this season. In Pistons history, best quote of the year. And not for good reasons, for funny reasons. I telling you that I got so many laughs this year out of this. Like I would come on the pot like I I tweeted out a video during the season of me just laughing because I couldn't comprehend. Like it, it didn't make any sense. Like it, it got to a point where I thought it was comedy at a certain point because he would, Monty would come out and say one thing, do it the opposite. And it got so bad that he was doing this beat writers who Pistons fans usually feel like are not critical of the team. Even they got sick of it and were pointing it out after <laughs> like it gets so bad that they were even writing about it and tweeting about, it. well, I don't know how many times you guys want us to ask him. We've asked him this already. I don't know why he keeps doing the opposite. Like it was that's how far it got. So by far, no, not even close. Monty Williams, best quote of all time. Not this season, best quote of all time. Easy. Um, next one. Uh, best short-term contract signing. I think that easily goes to Chemezi Metu. I, that's who I'm gonna give it to. I thought Chemezi Metu, I don't he's not going on the roster next year, but of all the guys, I think he he obviously played the most. Um, I think he showed the most like NBA skill or at least like athleticism. You could see like how someone thinks, you know, um, there's an NBA player in there somehow. Um, so I'm going to give it to Chemezi Metu. Um, there's some inappropriate ones that you guys tweeted at me, which is uh, crazy. <laughs> you guys got relax. Um, this is from Rockets Culture. Uh, the You Tried Your Best Award. You know what? We're going to give that award to James Wiseman. James Wiseman, I'm not sure how much better he got this year. He might have gotten better. Not sure how much. I don't know how good he actually is right now. I I, I still think he's probably not. I, I'm gonna be. I, I'm not trying to be too mean here. I'm I'm trying to make this a fun segment. So I'll just say he's not that good. He's still not that good. But damn it, he tried. We're gonna give it to him. James Wiseman, I you I'm sure you you know people didn't expect James Wiseman to get an award, but James Wiseman, damn it, he gets an award. He tried his ass off this year. It, I'll tell you this much: James Wiseman, whether he's going to be a really good player or not, it's not going to be because of lack of trying. He tried practice before the season. He's going to be trying to act like he 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 works his tail off. He's tr- he's trying. So you know I'm gonna give that award to him. You tried your best award, James Wiseman. There you go. 2023, 2024. You tried your best award. Goes to Detroit Pistons, James Wiseman. Um, and I think the last one, I think this one's obvious. The Adversity Award. Which player went through the most adversity or had to overcome the most? Kay Cunningham. Not even close. I, I don't know. I, just look at the roster. Like, go to the last game Kay played and look at the lineup he was playing with. Like, that that's that should be enough evidence for, for that award. We'll wrap it up there. Like, I don't. I know some people are going to try to say Jay and Ivy. It's not. It's 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 just not. Um, but we'll wrap it up there. Um, let me know what you guys thought about the podcast today. If you guys have any thoughts, again, let me know in the comment section down below. Or you can let me know over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. Read about all your podcast platforms. Um, leave a five-star review, whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. We are still going five days a week. Season ended. Locked On Pistons. Has not ended. We're still going five days a week. I got content coming for you guys daily. We out here grinding. I don't know anyone else out there that's grinding like Lockdown Pistons is. You feel me? So we're going to have content for you guys the rest of the offseason. Stay tuned, man. We got a lot of fun stuff planned. I got a lot of fun guests planned. Um, eventually, we're going to do a live show I, I, like in person. I want to do that. I don't know what we're going to do it this offseason, but maybe at the beginning of next year. Um but that's in the works. We have a lot of stuff in the works for Lockdown Pistons, man. It's going to be a fun offseason. I'm going to try and make it as fun as possible. Hopefully, we get a lot of stuff going on. Um, but that's all I've got for you guys today, man. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the playoffs. Enjoy the play-in tournament. I'm actually watching the Heat game right now. Um, I've talked for long enough. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.